Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum assalam. Sayyidi, how to deal with being ignored, ridiculed, humiliated, especially when trying to help people? Thank you for sharing such shining generosity with your time and wisdom. Thank you. So what was the last part? Uh, especially when trying to help people. Be ridiculed when trying to help people. Ignored, ridiculed, humiliated. Yeah, these are all the, the teachings that whatever we do, we're not doing it for people. So many times Allah will confirm that by just the reactions that you get from people. If any type of khidmat is for the sake of people and recognition of people, you got your pay, right? So we did something for people to recognize, then you got the barakah and the blessings of people recognized it. If you want your pay, you want your barakah and blessings from Allah then you do what you do for Allah So it means that in dunya a speaker will come and try to speak everything that make everybody happy and subjects that are going to make everybody happy. Then before you know it everything is always being modified for the dunya and for the audience because you want the audience happy. Then everything was for dunya but when they talk and they talk for what heavens wants then they don't really care if the people of the dunya liked it and didn't like it. They do what they do for Allah and His Rasul. If you're going out to feed people and to be recognized by people then your recognition got your award. But if you get to feed people for Allah's sake then it's for Allah's sake. It doesn't matter if people didn't like it, didn't agree with it and so we'll find that in every aspect of our life if we're there to be of service and, and people are bothering and disturbing, it wasn't for them, it wasn't for everybody to show gratitude but it was for our lives to be for Allah So Allah will, will test in that direction. That's why Sayyidina Isa salam, whatever he did at the end one of his representatives sold him for a bag of coins. So Sayyidina Isa comes into our life and teaches that if you think what you're doing… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Is, is for Allah then that's all you should be worried about that Allah's happy. Otherwise people they will sell you. So somebody will throw it out for a bag of coins, less than a bag of coins, less even than the price of a bag somebody will sell you out and, and come against you. So this these tasks, this work, this khidmat is not about people. So taking a path of humility was the door. They like it, they don't like it, we're not doing it for them. We're doing it to make Prophet happy. If Prophet is happy, Allah is happy, that's a given inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum my shaykh Walaykum as salaam Is monkeypox coming from a specific sin? Specific sin? Yeah, to every, every sickness we don't want to go there because uh, you know many people will get whatever comes onto this earth. But ev everything coming is the sins of mankind. Had we all been paradise people well then we would be living in paradise. But as a result we're all collectively 
together in this big bathtub they call dunya. And uh, whatever badness people are doing where well, we all suffer from it. So that, that, that is the danger of, of this collec collective difficulty. So we're not, uh, we're not sort of in a void away from people. So every time people are doing bad things all these bad sicknesses and all these they eat bad foods everybody got sick. They do bad things everybody will get sick. So all, all of these things are, are the times of difficulty and then all the people sort of sharing in that difficulty. That's why again so much of the reality is then on the protections. We do the zikr, we do the salawats, we do all that Allah has asked of our ibadah and the, the, the usul and everything that has been commanded. At the same time the taweez, the zikrs and all of the additional protections so that if something comes Allah inshaAllah to lessen its hardship and its difficulty. So we can't say that the, it's like a curse coming down on everybody because people are all going to get, get different sicknesses. But if Allah's rahmah and mercy so that not to have it severe for somebody whom they have this ishq and love of Prophet and make it to come and to go as something light and, and, and free from extreme hardship and difficulty inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum shaykh Wa alaykum as salaam wa Please forgive my ignorance and if I cause any controversy, I'm still shocked that two sons of two companions, Muawiyah Ridhanu and Saad bin Waqas would turn against Imam Hussain. What is the lesson we should learn from this? Is it just that dunya changes people? I'm just still shocked from it. Well, in the previous month we talked of Sayyidina Yusuf and eleven brothers who are prophets, not Sahabi and companions, so they were prophets of Allah Bani Israel had the twelve prophets at one time. So the eleven brothers whom are prophets of Allah got jealous of another prophet of Allah whom their brother and threw him in a well, a well to kill him. So and at the same time to remember shaitan entered paradise and talked to Eve made a fitna in paradise and made Adam and Eve to fall to earth. So the lesson is don't mess with shaitan and that leave trying to debate, to argue and what Allah gave to us is, seek refuge in me, He's going to be everywhere. There is no one safe from that and that's, that's the lesson. There is no one safe. There's no one safe in the tariqah, there's extreme jealousy. There's no title of shaykh or no shaykh, it doesn't mean anything. It means jealousy is apparent, they act on jealousy, they, they treat people based on jealousy. So means nothing. Know that shaitan is everywhere. As soon as somebody exhibits these bad characteristics then we understand. That's why all the teaching is that don't listen to titles but look to the character because anyone can have titles and those di in those days they had titles of prophets but they had jealousy and they threw their brother into a well. So the title didn't mean anything and that's why Allah gives always of Prophet khuluq al -adhim. You are of a magnificent character, not that I gave you the highest title. But you are khuluqul adheem, you are of a magnificent character. It wasn't a title that made Prophet but it was the immensity of the character, the mercy, the immense amount of love and compassion. And that's the importance of turuqs and tariqahs is regardless of the turban, turban size, turban color, what is the character? Are they ashiqeen and, and lovers of the reality? Well those are not that common and they have to be very soft, very loving. If you would turn on Mawlana Shaykh Nazim at any time that was a big ashiqeen. 
the immensity of how he would talk, the love and compassion in which he would to talk with people, you could feel it. So these ashiqeen, these are the characters of ashiqeen. But what Karbala shows for us is everybody has a Yazid no matter what they call their title. If their Yazid begins to take them and overtake them then jealousy comes because shaitan comes and starts to be jealous of why he talks like that, what's this knowledge of this, we never heard things like this. And then they start to attack you because they we never heard things like this but who are you that you'd have to hear everything? Even that statement is, is shows a character, why, why would you know everything? There's no one person who knows everything, Allah gave everyone something, not everyone the same thing that would be not a very generous Lord and would be a Lord that was very limited. Allah's unlimited and generosity that can't be imagined, He said, I gave everyone something and something different. So then uloom and knowledges should be, oh I never heard, alhamdulillah, mashaAllah new things coming all the time. So Karbala teaches for us that uh, everybody has a Yazid and if they allow their Yazid a strength and an anger then they begin to come against that which is holy. Outright Yazids they're everywhere. This earth is about to face a character called Sufiyani. And he has not appeared and he'll be appearing from Damascus. And you can see already the formation of that coming by some people on the other side who have lots of oil, they're going around and trying to resolve how to destroy anyone named Hassan, Hussein and Fatima. So they're, they're going to bring about a character that Prophet described for us, he's very ugly and his name is the Sufiani. Means he has the characteristics of the fitna of that time that continuously bothered Prophet and they were the people of Mecca who didn't like Islam, didn't want Prophet to govern that region. And that same ideology is now coming back where they don't want Islam in their area. They don't want the Ahlul Bayt and the lovers and ashiqeen and they don't want the light of Sayyidina Muhammad and that character will appear and that character will slaughter the entire region of the names of Ahlul Bayt and anyone with the name of these Ahlul Bayt. So the, the horrific nature of Yazid is very much alive and very much opening into this dunya and these are all hadith of Prophet If we don't keep this memory alive people will be astonished, what's this, what this happened? And you know what's happened, it was foretold. And we understood it. You can see now how people don't have the love and the respect. The importance of the message last night that you have to meditate so it's not lost. Anyone can say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah pray and then they were slaughtering the family. So anyone teaching a reality is a sign that this is a family, this is a family member. This knowledge is coming from a family inheritance that's on this earth for that purpose. So there are people who are coming like that, they're going to pray, they're going to say everything but in their heart they have a hatred and in their heart if they don't have a love and true love for Sayyidina Muhammad then horrific things will begin to happen. So Sufiyani is, is, uh, is coming onto this earth soon because the signs are everywhere and they're already going around trying to make their alliances and allegiances and what they want to make it as a political thing that they're coming against a certain political country but it's not that, they're against Imam Mahdi Salam, they're against Ahlul Bayt and they don't want anything of Ahlul Bayt to be on this earth. And that same group of people will launch an army against Sayyidina Mahdi in which Allah will open the earth and put them into that hole, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum shaykh Walaykum as salaam wa In a previous talk you mentioned about Imam Hussain's wife, she was born, she was from Jinn Nation, can you please tell us more about this? Char Banu 
she's Iranian and from the jinn kingdoms, jinn and earthly kingdoms, Sharbanu This is the wife that gave birth to Mam Zain al Abidin and through her lineage all these Imams came because of the the jinn nature within the reality, the uloom and the perfection of knowledges. Means from Zayn al Abidin as salam came Muhammad Baqir, from Imam Muhammad Baqir, Imam Jafar as Sadiq, Musa Qazim, Ali Rida. So, this whole lineage is coming from her and the, the line in which she has and the, the importance of her reality. And when they came to take her in the battles of Karbala, she escaped. And they say there's a mountain range in that region that opened and she entered into the mountain so that not to be touched by these people. There's many, many of these events and stories but that lineage of Shahbanu and is, is very important, the bloodline and the, the, the spiritual line that distinguishes the Imams and how they came from her bloodline and what set them aside for the immensity of the uloom and the knowledges they brought upon this earth. So alhamdulillah that this is a, this is a, a immense reality and that the many realities of, of Karbala that they were not left alone. And that Mawlana Shaykh even confirmed that in the events of Karbala there were 70 sultans of the jinn races upon the earth. Their sultanate, not even the sultanate, if just one of the jinn at that time entered into that battle could have flipped the whole of this earth upside down. So imagine then 70 of their kings were all standing guard and waiting for one isharat from Imam Hussain as salam. So, they were waiting to enter and to destroy everything but as a result of his sabr and patience that he wanted to fulfill the will of Allah And again this is the immensity of the khuluq and the character. That's when we understand that this character of Ahlul Bayt what they teach us is don't use your authority as a title, don't use your claim to family lineage as a title. But it's a responsibility. Now somebody keep putting on their things, I'm the Khalifa, I'm the Khalifa, okay congratulations you're a Khalifa, go ahead and do something with it. You don't have to advertise it, that's not the, the need or I'm this, I'm that, I'm the family of this, I'm the family, who cares whose family you're related to. That's a burden for you of what you have to carry upon this earth and that's the example that they gave. They didn't come and say that I'm the grandfather of Prophet so okay guys come on in now and destroy them. But that I will do whatever Allah wants for me and I will carry my burden and I'll carry what Allah has written for me. This character is their example. So they teach by that the same example, they inspire within the same example. You don't have to show anything, you don't have to say anything. Your knowledge should distinguish who you are, who likes it, follows it, who doesn't, they go on. But you don't have to put your titles upon your forehead and advertise them in all your banners and people be attracted to your titles, that these are just the relationship that you're responsible for. If you are a Sayyid then that's a responsibility for you. You're, you owe Prophet it's not something you go out and propagate but this is a responsibility that you have to carry and a burden you have to carry to live up to that reality inshaAllah. It's a different, different way of their teachings and this is the teachings of Imam al Husayn as salam Wa say sharat Imam al Husayn, we carry from the abundant flowing fountains of the reality of Imam al Husayn as salam which is the khuluq, the character and the knowledges to teach that self-sacrifice, serve Allah and serve through an ocean of humility that the only proof is in the knowledges. If the people are interested in the knowledges and trying to achieve these 
nothing else is necessary. Nobody has to verify it, vindicate it, give a title to it or take away a title from it. So alhamdulillah the knowledges are proof of their own inshaAllah. Mm, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, why is it that we don't see Imam Ali's name in the Naqshbandi chain? Yeah. Yes, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have that. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, alhamdulillah, so we have it there. So in, in all of our awrads and, and wazifas, I think in, in our salawat book we, we mention always the, the name of the, all the khalifas. There's also Sayyidina Usman's name is not there, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq's name is there, Sayyidina Umar Farooq's name alayhi salam is not there. So they, they kept it a certain way but because of the last days and the immensity of the need to have a love for all and to incorporate that love in everything then we call upon all the Khalifas and the Ahlul Bayt and the, the two grandsons of Sayyidina Muhammad Imam al Hassan and Imam Hussain And my general understanding and reality is call upon anyone you love, it doesn't cost you anything. And love is, is infinite. You can call and Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani, Salam. You can call and Sayyidina Ahmad al Rafai, Salam. Whomever you want to call of holy people, add them. Call upon your shaykh, pray upon the shaykh all the time that Allah keep him safe, keep, us, keep him to be healthy. These things are a sign of love. So when you love them, you call upon them, mention their name. Just the, the sweetness of mentioning their names gives a peacefulness to the heart when you mention the Ahlul Bayt and the Holy Companions. Sayyidina Uthman Qari, Jami al Qur'an al Majeed carries immense secrets of Holy Qur'an and the coding of Holy Qur'an. Mm -hmm. And then inshaAllah he inspire within our hearts to gather the Qur'an within our heart. Because all of us have a fragmented understanding. So what he held on a physical is his responsibility spiritual. That all these, these, these uh, what were they called at that time, they're all on this leather but his responsibility was to bring it. Not only physical world but anyone who has a love for Sayyidina Uthman Jamil Uthman Qani Jami al Qur'an al Majeed al Salaam, he brings that also into the heart. That all of what you understood of Qur'an, I'm going to bring it into your heart and to complete its love and begin to put all of its coding within your soul. That's his madad and support. So these are the, the realities and the realities of love, loving all of them. It doesn't take anything and, and Mawlana described dialogue in, in Diwan al Awliya, the Sayyidina Abu Yazid al-Bistami asked a sitting shaykh that, if your murids would call upon me, I would give them from my blessings and my secrets. Why don't they call upon me? He said, no I tell them inshaAllah to call upon you, Abu Yazid. And they would like certain names and he said, just say Abu Yazid and call on me and I'll send them my secrets into their hearts. And that's why then in the last days Mawlana Shaykh would always say, make your madad, recite the madad, recite upon the names of the shaykhs, they're standing there filled filled with immense blessings that all they want is you call and they send and shower these blessings into the home. So it means that many people are very wise and they sit in their home and they recite the madad out loud. So Sayyidina Abbas Khidr he likes to be called Sayyidina Abbas, Abbas Khidr So by reciting their names the fires comes, their nazar comes and blessings flow into the house. This is free. These are Allah's gifts and bounties but shaitan ties the tongue of somebody to not say, not mention, inshaAllah. Sayyidi, Islam has a new meaning and essence, Sayyidi the way you explain everything, mashaAllah. MashaAllah, thank you, Allah bless you. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaam wa 
What are a few of the qualities of achieving the nazar of Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein? Please forgive me. Well, Allah asked from the Qur'an for us, fi dunya hasanat wa akhirah hasanat wa kina adhaab an That Allah gave their secret in Holy Qur'an is that ask for Imam al-Hasan's goodness and nazar for you on dunya and Imam al-Hasan's brother who's the other Hasan called Husayn salam and that his nazar be upon you for your akhirah reality so that we be safe from the fire. So you have to read the articles that we have on Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and the key of Rahmah in which what is the name of Imam Ali salam that carries Ali and the, the name of Allah al-Khaliq that carries the secret of, of Sayyidatina Fatima Tazali salam and Sifat al-Rahman. So the governing ayah of Sifat al-Rahman is addressed from the soul of Imam al-Hasan salam. So anyone who wants goodness because Rahman is the governing attribute of the world of manifestation. Anyone who wants any goodness from this world of manifestation has to have an immense love for Imam al-Hasan and that to dress me from that light and that's our right light, that's our right eye and then the left eye is our Rahim. So Rahman right, left is Rahim. And these are then the realities of Imam al-Hasan and Imam al-Husayn Husayn to remember is Rahim because the Ya, so that's our clue is that Imam al Husayn has a Ya and Rahim has a Ya. This is from the Hayat, Bahr al Hayat. And Sifat al Rahman has to do with the light and nur. So, to achieve light in this life, this is coming from the soul of Imam al Hasan. And Sifat al Rahman that Allah when He created the light of Imam al Hasan dressed it from Sifat al Rahman because all of these lights are the lights of Prophet So He made the eyes of Prophet from the light of Rahman, the light of Rahim and that light was the light of the soul of Imam al Hasan and Imam al Husayn so when Prophet's eyes are looking at you, he's looking at you with the lights of his grandchildren, souls, they're coming through inshaAllah. It's very deep, deep subjects. The immensity is something that can't be understood. That's why we said that this love and the reality of love has to be immense for the love of Prophet Otherwise if they don't have that love for Prophet look what they did on the field of Ashura. How they prayed, how they called Azan and mentioned the name of Prophet and his grandson is there, the reality is there and that's the danger, that's, the, the, that's what's happening on the dunya again because now Sufiani is coming and they have the exact same character. They don't really understand Islam, Islam is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad whom attained a rahmah and then we taught them. That was the next month we'll be opening up Surah Al-Kahf and the events of Sayyidina Khidr I'm going to send you to one of my servants, one of them who attained the rahmah and then we taught him knowledges. So means Atina to attain the rahmah is most important, not going into fiqh school and then coming out thinking you're going to have rahmah. That's a danger otherwise Allah would have given it in a, different, in a different way. But I'm going to send you to my servant who attained a mercy. So we have to attain mercy first, so we have to attain a love and muhabbat and respect and character, good character for Prophet And then what Allah says, then we taught him. That's why then the knowledges will enter the heart if they have a love for Prophet InshaAllah Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.
بحرمة محمد المصطفى وبسيرة سورة الفاتحة